That's cat savage. Now you're live. Now oh, no. <laughs> fix your fix your hair, Hayley. Come on. We're, on, we're live. We're live on air right now. I'm just getting prep time. Right. So obviously we're not as prepared as we should be for this. <laughs> um, so today I think Regan wanted to introduce. Frank. Yes. So let, well, you can introduce Frank. This is Frank Alderton from Alderton Financial. He's a trusted advisor. Um, he helped me a lot with my business when I was starting it up with um, the finance side of things, which to me is kind of boring. Um, <laughs> so that's why we have... Thanks for having me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have Frank. <laughs> hey, Frank's now up? coming. <laughs> Frank's now leaving. No, um, but before, before we get into it, let me just tell the audience what we're drinking. I have someone that can drink wine with me. Oh. This is good, this is good. But I normally don't drink, so. You do, he likes his scotch. He loves and look, his I will, scotch. I will say, like I've seen a few episodes of, of this show, and fantastic show, ladies, first well, of all, thank fantastic you. show. But I will point out that, Regan, <laughs> you need go. to share the wine, no. okay? I've seen, I've seen <laughs> this wine go down, like, just, oh just, God. just down. So, I'm glad that I, I poured myself a glass before, <laughs> before the camera went on, just to make sure that I was, I was, I was uh, right. Okay. You right. do hog this guy <laughs> down a half bowl of scotch in one afternoon. That is untrue. <laughs> so actually, by the way, with that in mind, Scotch O'Clock, you have your own channel on what? a Friday. Friday, 2 p.m. 2 yes. p.m. Right. Yes. On the Autism Financial page. So all between the three of us, all we need to do is find something on Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Wednesdays and we're set. And then work oh. finishes at 2 yeah. o'clock every day. We will turn into alcoholics. Perfect. Paying gradually. So, you know, we've got I feel like we're not painting the, the, the right picture. Sure. No, no, we're not. Okay, right. right. Yeah. Yes. Um, so let's start. I need to, oh, you have yeah, it. I haven't even. I know. Okay, getting cut off. Wow. It is the. It's called Blast. It is a cab sav from Langhorn Creek. Um, and good. I haven't tasted it sounds, yet. Sounds good. So sounds good. But it also tastes delicious. Tastes delicious. Awesome. That's the label there. If you want to zoom in and have a look. Um, I bought it purely because of the label. Mm. You know, graphic designer and all. Mm. <laughs> Have a sip if, and if tell it us. Pretty, it's worthwhile. Exactly. Doesn't matter it's about made. where the grapes come from. It's look how good. it's made. Uh, no. As long as it's wine and yeah. alcoholic, I'm happy. And yeah. looks <laughs> pretty and it's good. Yeah. <laughs> right. So have a sip and then you can tell us how lovely it is. Mm -hmm. But we want to get down to finance mm -hmm. and new businesses and kind of what we should be doing when we start our own business, or even if you've already, you know, got your own business and you're up and running and maybe you don't have your finances completely sorted mm -hmm. or how they should yeah. be. So we're wanting to ask you what advice and tips you would give new business owners or existing business owners to really get their finances sorted so, so that there's no repercussions later on. Yeah, okay, all right, well let's sort of start. When it, when it comes to money, the, the, the biggest tips or, or things that I see that people do wrong are, it sounds, it sounds silly, yeah. but not having enough, all right? If you're going to start a business, right, one of the biggest mistakes we see people do is go into business undercapitalized, meaning they don't have enough money. That doesn't necessarily, necessarily mm -hmm. mean you have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, mm -hmm. but it means you need to plan accordingly, right? Okay. So if you're starting a cafe, right, and you know that it's going to cost you $100,000 to fit out the cafe, mm -hmm. don't borrow or raise or put in $100,000. You need to put in $100,000 plus like an emergency money, which is normally okay. equal to one one month to three months worth of operating expenses. Oh, okay. So because we don't know in new business exactly what's going to happen, right? we don't know what the industry is going to do, we don't know how the marketplace is going to respond, mm -hmm. we need to make sure we've got enough there to be able to continue to run smoothly mm. without having to worry about cash flow. So going yeah. in undercapitalized is a, is a massive mistake and people need to be really thinking about that because mm -hmm. And it's not even from, that's just the startup side of things. If you then talk about established businesses that want to expand, it's exactly the same thing. It's like, okay, if we want to expand, say, my business out to another location or another yeah. state, I've got to make sure I've got sufficient money and cash flow to be able to fund it and have emergency, just in yeah. case something doesn't work how I plan. Because more often than not, things don't go to plan. Yeah. Right? Things change, yeah. and we all know that. Totally. Right? Business is not easy, whether you're new or whether you're... 10 years in and trying to expand. The marketplace changes, technology mm. changes, staffing changes, everything mm. changes that makes it, it can be really difficult. So yeah. it's not easy, but making sure you've got the right amount of money around is hugely important. That is mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. And the second thing is, is, as I said, is planning. Like it's, it's planning everything. So you've got to come up with ideas 
and plan them out, whether they be short or long term. If you plan everything properly and then track how you're progressing along the plan, it actually makes it so much easier to achieve goals. Mm. Because so many people just go into the office every day or the cafe or the restaurant or yeah. the retail shop and just mm. do the operational tasks, not really thinking about what the end result is or yeah. what the plan is. And that makes it, it can be very demotivating if you go into a bad period in business. Could, yeah. could you give me like an example of like there may be something that either another business that you know or, or you yourself like something that you've planned that would be like a good... I don't know, a good way, I suppose, to Well, plan, it could be, it could be anything. Like, if we use the same example that I said before, let's say I wanted to go and expand over to Melbourne, for yeah. example, say, I have to have a plan that says, okay, I'm going to do that by this day. Okay? I want to do that, and it's going to require this, this, and this, which means my plan for the next three to six months, if that's what the timeline is, means that in month one, I've got to do this, in month two, I've yeah. got to do this, in month three, month four, month five, and be able to plan that accordingly and actually track that things are getting yeah. ticked off. Yeah. So it's like, here's the things that have to be done by the organisation. What am I going to do? What is this part of my team going to do? Who, what's going to mm. do this? Do I need external support to help me facilitate parts of it that I'm unsure about? Mm -hmm. And actually allocating and planning and tracking everything is that really important. That makes so much sense. You're being mm -hmm. more proactive rather than reactive, yeah. which yeah, I think absolutely. a lot of businesses are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they deal absolutely. with it when it comes up. Just yeah. understandable. Yeah. We kind of get overwhelmed and lots to think about. So the planning just well, seems right. like an extra thing to do, I can imagine. That's mm. right. But it's planning about everything. Like, it's not just about expansion or growth or anything. Like, obviously, yeah. us being an accounting practice, tax planning is a big thing. Mm. Right? Yeah. There's nothing worse than finishing out a year and not knowing where you're at financially. But probably the number one question I get asked by business owners, whether they're small or big, is... How much money is mine in the bank? Mm. Right? Meaning, how much have I got to pay to the ATO? How much have I got to pay out in super and employee liabilities? In all of these other, you know, important things, to stock or whatever it might be. How much yeah. is left for me as a business owner, particularly in early stages? If you don't Zero. know what. If you don't know, <laughs> quite often, quite often, yeah. quite often, the question then quickly turns into uh, none. But this is how much you need to put in to the business yeah. to, uh, to prop yeah. it up. But yeah, so it's really important yeah. to plan sort of everything. And yeah. It can be quite administrationally challenging, I suppose, mm. because if you try and over plan, it kind of becomes a, a paralysis by analysis sort yeah, of yeah, situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you end up spending more time in administration than you do in actually yeah. executing on the plan. But you still need to have the, the foundation or the framework there to go and do it mm. for sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That makes awesome. so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, when's a good time to think about registering for GST and stuff like that, being a smaller business? So GST is, um, the threshold for GST is 75000 However, mm -hmm. it kind of depends on, on what you're doing. Because we've got to remember that, for example, we go back to the cafe thing again. Right? If you're going to go and spend $100,000 on a fit out for a cafe, mm -hmm. and then you're going to open, I would be advising a client to register straight away. Because if they're going to go and spend $100,000 and without producing any revenue, it means that there's potential $10,000 refund coming in GST from the ATO. Mm, yeah, right. If it's a small business that's not spending a lot of money, mm -hmm. then you would wait until they get to the point where they're actually going to breach that $75,000 threshold because they'll end up with a bill each quarter rather than a refund. Yeah, right. Because they don't have any expenses to claim. So for a little sole, uh, sole trader, someone doing yeah. coaching or someone doing that doesn't really have any huge expense, mm -hmm. then it's not worth registering until you have to. But in different scenarios, it sort of changes. Yeah. But the $75,000 threshold is not you wait until you've invoiced $75,000. It means if in one month you multiply that by 12 equals 75, you have to register. Oh, in that that's point really in time. interesting okay. to know. Yeah, the ATO, know. Unless you can justify that it was a once off and that you're actually not going to do it. But if you actually got reviewed or audited by the ATO mm -hmm. and they went back and you were consistently at a month's value that equated to more than the threshold, you can uh, get back out of GST problems. And yeah. yeah right. wow. One thing that I wanted to ask about is dreaded receipts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you probably get this a lot, but what, what, there's two scenarios here. What if you're a new business owner before you get into all of that and it's all over, mm. and, you know, like it's a mess? Um, what's the best way to keep everything organised? And then if you're already existing, business owner and your receipts are on your computer, in boxes, everywhere, how can you quickly kind of 
get that all sorted. Look, it, is, it can be challenging, but again, it depends on industry. Like yeah. Some industries are really easy to calculate GST because everything's black or white. It has GST or it doesn't. Because that's really why, I mean, keeping the receipts is one thing. We've got to keep our receipts. Mm. That's, that's, that's yeah. just the way it goes. But actually needing to look at the receipts is becoming less and less necessary with technology, with cash. Really, no one really uses cash anymore. Yeah, and because, right. you know, my suggestion would be to anyone starting a business, get an accounting system set up straight away. Because nowadays you can feed the bank data straight into the accounting system yeah. and it comes in every day. So that means yeah. if you try and, like, we tell all of our clients, don't buy anything with cash, just buy everything on the card because then it's mm -hmm. automatically going into the accounting system. We don't have to go through piles of cash receipts to try and work it out. Mm -hmm. It does get different if you're in certain industries, like the food industry, for example, because some things have GST and some things don't. So if you went and spent 30 bucks at Coles or Woolworths, then that's not necessarily mean that there's $3 GST. It could be half of it has GST, half of it yeah. doesn't. So yeah. then you need to get into more detail about looking at the receipts. Mm -hmm. but, um, Do you have any, like, uh, know of any really good apps or anything like Because I hear lots of people will just like scan it in instead rather than keep the yeah. receipt. Can you can you do that though? You don't yeah, actually look, need to have the hard copy. No, you don't have to have the hard copy. So, I mean, if we had hard copies of all our clients' receipts well, and invoices, we'd, 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 we'd die <laughs> we drown in paper. Because your boxes will probably be in here. <laughs> but yeah, there is. There's good systems. There's one called Receipt Bank, which we use, which is quite quite good. Um, right. So definitely have a look at that. Um, yes. mm. Also, I mean, we primarily use Zero as an accounting software, so that works really well in with Zero. What for? What about for one-man bands? <laughs> look again. It depends how much, how many transactions, or how much you're buying. Mm -hmm. Like if it's not that much, and we don't have to pick apart the GST, then honestly, go with the shoebox method. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. But as long as you're I'm recording sure. it, you know, you might want to punch it into a spreadsheet or something if you don't think that you're ready for an accounting system. Um, yeah. Just to keep track of what you're spending. Mm -hmm. But realistically, you should just be setting up a business account in, in some form, getting a card for that, and keeping your business entirely separate from your personal. Mm -hmm. right. Don't have like a lot of people that start businesses as well. This is another mistake. It makes administration, bookkeeping, and accounting really time consuming. If you just have one account and you're a sole trader or something and you buy, when you're going out for dinner with your friends, you're using the same card as when you're going to buy stock or something mm, for yeah, business right. and you pile it up. So definitely separate. Keep everything completely separate. That's a, that's a massive one. Such a good point. So would you recommend then opening a business account as well instead of having just a normal savings account? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because again, it makes it easier. So if you don't have an accounting system, you've already got everything that you need to look at in one spot. You don't mm -hmm. have to get your credit card statement and go business, personal, business, that's, yeah. yeah, it's too time consuming and, it's, and you don't want to be paying accounting firms to do that because it's too expensive. Mm. Yeah, so right. if, if, if the more that you can streamline all of your processes when it comes to administration and bookkeeping and accounting, the cheaper accounting becomes and therefore the more you can spend on actually the advice side of things and not have to worry yeah. about getting big bills. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Um, uh, another thing was, uh, I wondered whether there was like reoccurring issues that you have. You used to come in and you yeah, see clients, right. like, and yeah. you're like, okay, these guys have done it again. as well again. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything like that? Like, There's always reoccurring issues. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Look, with, the, with anything, to for agree. us, it's about it's about getting information because. You know, to be compliant with the ATO, it's, it's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of information from our clients. So it's, the, the biggest problem we get is finding ways to make sure we've got everything captured and we don't have to keep sending emails. Can we get this from mm -hmm. you? Can you send us this? Can you check this mm -hmm. out? Uh, that's probably the biggest issue. So not, not, <laughs> non-communication. Non -communication. Non -communication. Yeah. 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 That's the, yeah. That's the same thing, whether it's with clients or whether yeah. it's with staff or whether that. it's with suppliers or anything. Yeah. It's always, it always causes a problem. Well, they've got to go back and dig stuff out. It's probably going to take a while, isn't it, for mm. them? Yeah, look, digging your, putting your head in the sand is another one. There's nothing <laughs> yeah. worse than having to try and redo a year or two years' worth of stuff because oh, people have failed to see the importance in accounting and bookkeeping. Yeah. And so they just throw it all in a, like I said, they use the shoebox method, but they don't do anything else. It just sits in a box. There's no business bank account. There's no accounting system. There's no spreadsheet. It's just a box. Mm. That's not... Good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a real problem because it, it eliminates your ability to report, to understand where you're at. It eliminates my ability to advise on anyone what yeah, of course. is actually happening in their business or what they should or shouldn't be doing because I can't mm. see anything mm. except for yeah. a box. I can't explain anything on a box. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there anything else that you kind of think 
really starting out in a business, um, business owners should be aware of. You know? The biggest thing is, another big thing is structure. Like, like the structure of the business you're setting up, you know, companies trust, you know, throw all these things into the mix because what you actually plan to do with your business plays a really big part in what your structure should be mm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Someone who has, has these, these grand uh, plans and wants to build something that's a 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollar business should really be thinking about their structure really early on mm -hmm. because if you're growing and growing and growing, doing structure changes can be really expensive if it's not done correctly. So mm -hmm. if you're someone that's going to start a business, you're going to go through rapid growth quickly, yeah. you're, really, you're really investing a lot in growth and, and expansion and all this sort of stuff, you've got to have the structure right. Otherwise, you can get hit with much more tax, you can get hit with a whole bunch of different transfer duties and capital gains tax when you're trying to restructure. Yeah. It can cost you a lot you of don't money. Want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you're someone that just wants to start something up and just sort of cruise and you're happy with a with a smaller business, you still need to have the right structure. But mm. you still it's it might not be as complex as the other one, but it still needs to be done early on. When you yeah. say structure for a business, do you mean like I think of all already like how the organisation is like saying org charts and no, like, that's no, no. what so, I think of yeah, structure. Yeah, yeah. So no structure in, from a tax point of view is are you trading under a company? Are you trading under okay. a family trust? Completely different. <laughs> are, you, are you a sole trader? Yeah. Uh, or whatever it might be. Uh, do you have a combination of, of both? Right. Company and a trust? Do you have multiple companies? Do you need to do things like move assets into one spot and do, you know there's lots and lots of different ways but it really Ooh. depends on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take on investment? Because if you're a family trust, you can't raise money. Unless oh, okay. if you're a company, you can raise money. You can, there's other ways around it, doing partnerships and joint ventures and all this sort of stuff. But your plan really dictates what you should have. Mm. And if you get it right in the beginning, it can save you a tremendous amount in tax. Mm -hmm. Have you got like little, I don't know, like I, I'm thinking there should be like a checklist, I'm sure there is somewhere online, of like every when you're first starting your business, okay, like register the name, um, yep. like get a domain, you know, all yep. those kind of things. Like, yep. do you know, would you say, what's the perfect structure <laughs> um, in yeah, your so we've, eyes? We've got a lot of checklists and templates oh. and, and questionnaires in our administration that we send out to people to sort of take them through, guide you through what you're trying to do and what you want to do, and then it sort of will spit out. This is what you should. So make sure you're covered yeah. for everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Can you give us some, really some of those? Can I you would happily, up? happily, <laughs> happily provide them for you. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. Um, and, and what are generally are those first few things? Can you remember, like, as in, all right, you're starting. Someone comes to you and says, "I'm start." You know, I know you get people that have already started, most likely. But say someone needs coming to you, and they say, "I'm starting a business. What is the first thing I should do?" And what's the second thing I should do? The first thing I always look at is asset protection. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that I would ever say to anyone starting a business is like, if you're starting a business and you own property, make sure you start the business in a separate entity. Yeah. Not right. under your own personal name, because then if something went wrong with the business, then your property is exposed. Mm. So yeah. asset protection is, is normally the number one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start talking about what your plans actually are and whether you've got family members that you can distribute income to, then we start talking about trusts and all this sort of stuff. I mean, we run wow. it all through, um, you know, the tax specialist that we have here. So everybody in, in the office is pretty switched on about structures, but we have somebody that is a gun that we use to make sure that we're really maximising tax and all awesome. sort of stuff. Yeah, looks like you've always awesome. got everything under control. Yeah. So that's why we come to you well, for advice. That's, 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 that's the, uh, the best part of business is, is perception. Right? Yeah. I mean, you might think that things are going on, on the surface, they look great. But underneath, it's all grumbling down. That's so. why they have scotch and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're so that's too right. hard yeah. on a Friday. My fourth tip is keep a good supply of alcohol <laughs> in the office because there's going to be days when you need it. Yeah. 100%. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, every single day. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, so yeah, and I mean, that's why we go, like, um, yeah. Frank's in the office um, around the corner, <laughs> and we pop in there quite a lot yeah. to ask for his advice, um, just as 
whether it's your social voice asking advice or ourselves as well, with our, with our side hustles. Um, yeah. Yeah, Regan quite often comes in asking need for it. tips on putting. Oh, and, yeah. uh, golf, uh, so I love helping out where Regan's I can. Regan's a very good uh, golfer. Mark, yeah. Very yeah. good golfer. <laughs> yeah. Apparently I ask Frank for tips. We should see that. Other way around. Course. Maybe we should do a live stream of us. Um, Let's do it. Oh, the balls We've got, it's yes. in, it's in, no, it's in the office. It's in the office. Chipper, remember? <laughs> we should do a chipping comp. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a one-time chipping comp. <laughs> I'd yeah, like to see on. that. We're seen. taking bets now, so... Um, <laughs> Regan's paying a dollar five. I'm paying fourteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so unless Regan, you got any other questions or oh, really? you wanna yeah. you feel like we've missed something that no, business owners no, should no. know? No. It's just it's it's really it's all about planning, like in, mm -hmm. in any area, planning and tracking and reporting and you know the other thing would be making sure you've got the right people around you. It's a major yeah. thing. Like my early yeah. stages of business and you know, everyone here has heard all these things before, but you know, it's so true. After you've been three to five, six years in business, you realise how much of an influence your immediate group of people, whether it be your, your advisors or whether it be the people in the company mm. or mm. just the people you're associating with in the social capacity, it all makes a big difference to, yeah. to how motivated you are, to how far you push yourself. Mm. It makes a big, big difference. Totally agree. Totally. Yeah. If you're seeing people around you that uh Driven, yeah. Yeah, it's challenging you. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Makes a Plus, I'm highly competitive, so this is a real, really? a real problem of mine. <laughs> really? yes. Yeah, you yes. should yes. see. You should yes. see the banter that he gives me in the office. Yeah. Physically, emotionally abused <laughs> by him. <laughs> there's, no, there's, <laughs> no, no there's, there's no physical. There's no physical abuse no, no, in the just, office. <laughs> it's just emotional <laughs> every day. I'll beat you at golf. Oh, I'll beat you at golf. Yeah, yeah. It wears me down. He well, tries. This yeah. is why Regan has turned to the drink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, underline time was my idea, guys. Yeah, it was <laughs> actually. <laughs> no, well, and it's tea time. Yep. Tea time. And it's tea time. Um, well, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Having We've loved Both having you here. We've, I've been taking notes, as you can see. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> valued, really valued that. So thank you very much. And I'll just come in and ask you like I normally do. So. Oh, and now I, now I have to learn how to turn oh, this off because yep. I'm a newbie at it. Oh. Yep. Yeah, Opal wasn't there the whole time. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye. I'm going to slide it.